Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for returning. Going to be speaking with Mr. Aidan Foley this evening, CEO at True Digital Surgery. And he's joining us to talk about a partnership with Askelap Incorporated. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Mr. Well, give our listeners a bit of your background and talk a bit about uh, your recent work there at True Digital. Sure. Um, So I've been in digital imaging my entire career, and I'm embarrassed to say that's decades long now. Um, And I've been able to apply digital imaging to a couple different industries, but I'm focused completely now on digital imaging as it relates to microsurgery. Mm -hmm. And I've had the opportunity to participate there in a company called True Vision Systems, which was the predecessor to True Digital Surgery. And True Vision Systems had a mission, which was to bring the analog microscopes of today, which use a technology that's fundamentally about 70 years old. It was originally created in the 1950s. And to bring that technology into the digital age. And so at True Vision Systems, we started out doing that, and our goal was to, again, just bring digital imagery to the surgeon so that they could see better. Mm -hmm. You could transcend the, the... the capability of the human eye. And so when you're using the current analog system, you're you're limited to the imagery that it can generate and the human eye. Digital imaging, as we all know, transcends that. And so we've been able to do that. In True Vision Systems, we sold that company to um, Alcon, and we're very happy about that relationship and that partnership and it was very similar to the one that we have and enjoy now with Ascalab. Um, the similarity is that Alcon and Ascalab were our distribution partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alcon was in the um, ophthalmology marketplace, obviously. People would know Alcon very well there. And they were generous enough to put their name, it was called Ingenuity, on our platform and bring our products to their customers out in the field. Mm. Yeah. Ascolab does the same thing, and they focus on neurosurgery, ENT, and spine. And the benefit for us is, is a few things. Um, number one, it allows us to focus our financial resources mm-hmm. on the development of the technology, which is great. And it allows a large company like Alcon or Ascolab to leverage their resources in SGNA, Sales General Administrative, so that when their salespeople are out talking to their customers, they can talk about two products, if you will, mm-hmm. instead of one. So we get leverage in terms of our financial resources in developing the IP, and they get leverage in terms of their SGNA. Mm-hmm. And it, I have to say, you know, has, I, I think a tremendous benefit to both parties. So we get to partner with a company like Ascolab that has, well, they've been around 150 years. Mm -hmm. And they have a tremendous name and reputation, well-earned, out in the industry. And they've got hundreds of salespeople and service and support people around the world. And so what that means to us is we get to market sooner and we get tremendous customer support in different parts of the world, in different languages, and all that that means through that partnership, which is great. And what I think it were a benefit to them in is, as you know, some large companies, and, and forgive me, I'm, I, I'm a, I'll say this tongue-in-cheek, I'm a recovering big company guy too. <laughs> so <laughs> large companies sometimes have longer innovation cycles, product development cycles. Mm -hmm. And so where we think we add uh, an advantage to our large company partners is we bring them leverage in their R&D spend. So we're a pretty good, we like to think, uh, innovation partner. We can do things more quickly. And so we're able to bring product and and innovation to the market uh, much quicker than they might be able to. And so we've enjoyed the partnership with Ascolab a great deal, and of course the one we had with Alcon. 
Now, Ascolab, they, they develop a, a digital microscope, uh, microscope, and you say you're bringing uh, that product to, to market as well. Um, what are some of the features about, about their uh, robotic digital microscope? Yeah, it's actually the other way around, Neil, so oh. forgive me. Um, we're the ones that develop the microscope, and they bring it to market with their name on it, okay. which is great. Okay. Thanks, right? for the, so, thanks for the clarification. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, there are some things that are very unique about the product. Um, on the, I'm going to go through just a couple uh, big buckets. Mm -hmm. On the imaging side, one of the so – talk about imaging and robotics. On the imaging side, one of the things that's key is the surgeon using the, the current state of the art with, with analog microscopes is he or she is tethered to the eyepieces of, of the microscope. And anywhere that, that that microscope needs to go in order for the surgeon to see the surgical field the surgeon has to contort his or her body to wherever that microscope head needs to go because he or she is tethered looking through the eyepiece. It's no different than you would looking through a pair of binoculars. Mm -hmm. So you can only see as long as you're looking through the eyepieces. That's right. And it's a problem for surgeons. So a surgeon typically reaches his or her peak performance at the, around the age of 55. And the problem with that, because they've had so much experience and, and they're very proficient in their procedures, et cetera, the problem with that is by that time, they've had decades of having to contort their head and their spine around to where in some of these surgeries, you've, you've got to very get into positions that human beings normally mm -hmm. wouldn't be comfortable doing. Absolutely. <laughs> and... So you can imagine, Neil, if you're in a neurosurgery that, for example, would take four, eight, sometimes 12 hours, and you're having to contort that way, it's a problem. And it can shorten literally the career of some of these surgeons because they have so much spine and neck trauma that they just can't do it anymore. So with our system, the robot and, and the head, the lens, does all the contorting for them. And they're able to sit upright or stand upright and look at a screen. And on that screen is an image that's far better, uh, at least we've been told by the surgeon, mm -hmm. than they can get from an analog microscope. And it's on a big 65-inch screen, 3D, high definition. And on the screen, they're able, in addition to that, to use image mode. So if they want to see the vascularity of some structures that they're looking at. They can simply toggle back and forth between different image modes to see different aspects of the tissue that they're working mm -hmm. on. And if they're looking, for example, through something called a cannula, it's, it's, a, it's a, a way in which you would look deeply into a surgical field. Well, when you do that today, you can introduce shadows into what the surgeon is trying to see because typically the light is above and the surgeon is trying to look down or some of the uh, other people in the room, the assistants are trying to look down and you can introduce shadows. Well, that limits what the surgeon can see. We use something called coaxial illumination, which means the light that we generate is down in the cavity itself. And so the shadows are eliminated completely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. And then one other thing, just to enable, and all this goes to the, the, the theme of allowing the surgeon to see better. We use something called high dynamic range. Mm -hmm. And high dynamic range lets the surgeon see more data in either dark images or light images. So I'll give you an example. Um, when, well, when you're in a surgery, if the surgeon's in a surgery and there's a, a bunch of light shining on the liquids, mm -hmm. be they blood or, or whatever is being introduced in the surgical field, those are reflective properties in some way. And so you can get a bright light back at you, and it occludes what he can see. Similarly, like I was saying, if there are shadows in there, 
that are either caused by the tissues themselves or, like I said, some other way of introducing shadows, the high dynamic range lets you see better than your human eye can in both of those areas. So here's an analogy. If, if you were driving your car, and you ever drive your car into the sun oh, as it's setting? I've done it many times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not fun. Me too. No, not fun at all, right? And so it, it, it occludes your vision even though there's plenty of light. So what high dynamic range does is it, would, it takes down the amount of light coming from the sun, and it brings up the light coming off the road. So even though there's plenty of light, you're being limited as a driver in the road that you can see in front of you. And so high dynamic range allows the surgeon to see much more than he could from um, analog microscopes today in both dark and in bright light situations. So that's just a, a few of the things that we think makes us very unique. Now, we also that's in, unto imaging. Unto the robotic side that I mentioned, there are a couple of key things that we do as well. Um, when the surgeon goes into a surgery, they, they obviously plan out the surgery. What, what we do is enable the surgeon, other than being able to just automatically let the robot contort to the, the angle that they want to see, the surgeon can also, with the robot, assign something called waypoints. And the waypoints are just pre-programmed places that the surgeon wants the lens to be, wants the microscope to be as he's planning out or she's planning out that surgery. And it, the robot will just automatically go there. And then we have another feature, and again, this is, you know, digital robotics, where it's locked to target. And the lock to target feature says, well, I want to focus on this aspect of the tissue uh, or this part of the, the surgical field. No matter where you move the microscope, that target will always stay in focus. So that's a tremendous advantage for the Absolutely. surgeon. And he can use or she can use a 10x zoom on that lock to target. And the 10x is unique in the industry. Nobody else can do that. And in the 10x component of it, it'll still stay at full resolution. So he or she, the surgeon, will get on a lock to target no matter what angle the robot goes to. He or she will see that image in a way you just can't see with an analog microscope. So we think both with digital imaging and robotics, we think we have some unique features we can bring to the market. Well, Aiden, uh, where can our listeners get some more information about uh, True Digital and about some of this uh, technology uh, that we've been talking about this evening? Boy, we'd be happy if people would visit us at our website, uh, and it's truedigitalsurgery.com. Appreciate that information, and uh, I appreciate you joining us here on Health Professional Radio this evening. Lots of uh, great information. Uh, Hope we'll be speaking again. It's been such a pleasure. I'd look forward to that, Neil. Thanks for taking an interest in us. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Aiden Foley. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.